This episode is sponsored by Capterra and by Drop. Earlier this month, on our special July 4th episode of Weekly Weird News, we got a little bit drunk and talked about President Donald Trump's very special Independence Day event, Salute to America, which was his long-awaited attempt at doing for America's military what the French do every year on July 14th, in commemoration of that day back in 1789, when the French people decided to storm the Bastille, they can't stop us all. That's exactly what it was called. Uh Uh-huh. Trump had been in Paris for Bastille Day back in 2017 and was quite impressed by the parade's display of raw military power. But as we saw on July 4th, his attempts to recreate the Bastille Day experience over here amounted to giving a speech in the pouring rain next to four stationary armored vehicles. All thanks to the liberals over at the Pentagon. And the ones that were seeding the clouds with all that rain. Yeah. And the ones who built all the shitty roads in Washington, D.C. that can't mm-hmm. support it. Everyone's, everyone's against him. Well, after this year's Bastille Day parade this Sunday, I I don't think we've heard the last from Trump about this sort of thing. Uh, Because this year, the highlight of Bastille Day was a guy flying through the air on a hoverboard holding an assault rifle. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. So, uh, top that. Yeah. (laughs) It was apparently not all that impressive to French President Emmanuel Macron, who couldn't even crack a smile for the spectacle unfolding before him. He was probably scared. We have this technology. What have I done? (laughs) But uh, on the internet, at least, France's flying soldier got the holy shit reaction that it deserves. I mean, can you believe it? It's just like in the movies. Specifically, it's just like in the 2002 film (laughs) Spider-Man. Except it's real life. And uh, we've never really seen anything like this before. I mean, we've seen short hoverboard trips. We've seen the hoverboards that the millennials use that get caught on side sidewalks. Those don't count. And we've seen the water jet hoverboards, but yeah. none of them had assault rifles. Yeah. So yeah. We, we've seen stuff like this before. We've actually seen this exact flying vehicle before, yeah. minus the gun. Uh, but it is, it is weirdly, uh, for some reason, jetpacks and similar technologies. They're all kind of forgettable. Like, they've been around in one form or another for the last 60 years. Oh, yeah, they, we did that. They huh? show up at sporting events and fairgrounds and on the internet on a fairly regular basis. The fan man has been yeah. around for years. Yeah, everyone sees it and they're like, wow, that's cool. Uh, and they forget because they're really impractical and inefficient and it never goes beyond just, like, a guy flying around for 10 seconds. Also, uh, I mean, any experienced skeet shooter could take that guy out of the air. Yes. <laughs> a very good point. Yeah. He's not well protected up there. No. But, yeah, ever since the earliest examples of jetpacks, though, uh, going back like 60 years, the military has been very interested. And the specific models seen flying around on Bastille Day might actually end up being practical enough for military use. Until we get to Iron Man. Then it'll be old trash that the, the commoners can have. Yeah. Oh, you want to fly around? Do it on the old model. Yeah. Well, the guy flying in Paris on Sunday was Frankie Zapata. Uh, he's been showing off his Zapata Flyboard Air since 2016, and it's quite impressive. All modes of personal air transport are severely limited by how much fuel they can carry while still being light enough to fly, but the Zapata Flyboard can fly up to 93 miles per hour, or 150 kilometers per hour, for 12 minutes while carrying up to 225 pounds, or 102 kilos. We're doing the math these days. I mean, he's a Frenchman... He very light. He flew his thing over France. The least we could do is convert our measurements into metric for you. Has he been able to cross the, cross the English Channel yet? He plans to do it. Yeah. Uh, later this year. That that's like his next big feat. He's gonna have to make some like modifications to it. But yeah. uh, at its narrowest point, the English Channel is 21 miles long. Mm-hmm. So he's he's trying to go uh, from Calais to Dover. Yeah, they did the uh, the jet suit guys did it, didn't they? Yeah. No. Anyways, this thing can actually reach altitudes of up to 5,000 feet, or 1.5 kilometers, which is all very impressive considering that up until recently, this sort of technology could only stay in the air for very, very short periods of time before it would run out of fuel. Still, though, there's a reason every demonstration of this thing has been operated by the guy who invented it. It's fucking dangerous. And even Frankie Zapata himself admits that during testing, he crashed a bunch, and then anyone trying to ride this thing without 50 to 100 hours of training on the Zapata water flyboard, they're probably going to die. Yeah. Boom! Right into the earth. Yeah. Don't do it. However, there is a simpler, safer model called the Easy Fly that Zapata has been marketing to various militaries, which comes with two mounted handlebar joysticks for control, as well as a tablet displaying relevant information and an auto hover mode where the software takes over. It's like a Segway in the sky. That's when you unholster your gun and you fire away. 
the drone is doing the job for you. Sure. Uh, Zapata collaborated with the uh, U.S. Special Operations Command starting in 2017 to develop the Flyboard's military variant known as the Individual Aerial Mobility System, or IAMS. IAMS. <laughs> IAMS. Who's flying? IAMS. And uh, last summer, they even tested out the Easy Fly for two months to see how easy it would be to train special operation forces to fly it and also test out just how practical it could actually be on the battlefield. No, you're going backwards. <laughs> you already have drones. Yeah. It's unclear what the ultimate conclusions of that testing were. I'm sure everyone had fun. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's entirely possible that these things could be part of our military arsenal in the near future, unless France snatches them all up. Yeah. It's an arms race, baby. They were, they were the first country to weaponize it. Yeah. So, there you go. Now, of course, there's still a ton of limitations here. In addition to running out of fuel after just 12 minutes in the air, these flyboards, they're loud as hell, <laughs> making them useless for covert operations. Yeah, you're, and not, you're not sneaking up ahead on anyone in these things. You run out of fuel, you're, you're behind enemy lines. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> SEAL Team 6, here, here at SEAL Team 6, we're known for uh, letting people know we're coming just miles in advance. What's that sound? <laughs> Weird. Uh, anyways, the design of this whole thing, it completely leaves the operator open to a enemy fire, like we said before. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. not really hard for any experienced marksman. But um, it's, not, it's not even clear whether they'd be able to return fire if they were to be fired upon. Yeah. You'd, uh, without the stabilization, it's going to sh shoot you backwards. Yeah, and like, they, they haven't said whether the gun he was flying around with in Paris was even real. Because, like... Well, that would have been dangerous. Like, it de it, de it definitely it didn't have a, a magazine in it. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, it's, what it's, he needs... It's not clear if it was, like, plastic. Because, like, a real gun weighs... That's some weight. And a lot of flying this depends on, like, you know, your own body weight shifting. Here's what you do. You give them those pumpkin balls yeah. to throw at people. Yeah. Yeah. That, we've seen... <laughs> that's a proven method. Yeah. Pumpkin balls. Exactly. That are actually grenades. Also, the price tag of this thing is uh, $250,000. So, uh... It's a bit steep. Nothing like the F-22, but yeah. it's up there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, considering the rest of the arsenal that we have in the military, this is a pretty, it's a discount uh, item. Yeah, mm -hmm. although I'm sure they'd mark it up. Yeah. The way it's like, oh, yeah, we uh, this, this stapler costs $300. It's yeah. weird how that happens. Uh, anyways, the fact that this can get quickly, uh, or could get a person quickly from point A to point B, regardless of terrain, that does have some practical use. You uh, would think. The real practical use would be loading supplies onto it and sending it somewhere. Yeah, well, it can't carry that much weight, though. Like 200 pounds? Some MREs? That's, I mean, but, like, your average soldier, when he's all geared up, like, a lot of these guys are carrying, like, 50 pounds of gear. Yeah, it's not going to be able to carry ammunition or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. they manage to, like... Or water. I mean, they could use the technology to basically turn it into a drone that's carrying yeah. something. But... Oh, here comes all that gauze I ordered, because it's the yeah. only thing that it can take. Yeah. Zapata also says they're working on other concepts using the same tech, like a medevac stretcher for emergencies to get people out of harm's way if they've been injured, regardless of terrain difficulty. So that, yeah, cool. that's, that's two cool. little ones that are balancing in between it, terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Terrifying. It's, it seems to me like drone tech has already solved all of these problems. Well, these are, I mean, drone techs use propellers. Lame. These use miniature jet engines, like seven of them, all mounted with their own little computers and fuel systems. There's got, they got redundancy. He says, despite the fact that it's very dangerous, it's also relatively safe. But very cool. And very legal and very cool. But Although it, it was not legal in France. Uh, that's why he did all of his testing like in the U.S., mm. but apparently France changed their mind. They're like, we can't let the U.S. have a monopoly on this cool shit. Uh, he should have flown to the top of the Eiffel Tower and changed the flag to America's flag. That would have been a great prank. <laughs> Anyways, the, the tech, it definitely seems like it could be useful for a lot of things, military or otherwise. So, I mean, it's again, it's cool. It's it, cool looking. They, uh, Dubai is still planning on using these as, like, rescue operations in case there's a fire in one of their skyscrapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... I don't know what you'd be able to do other than, like, get up there and get a good look. It would be funny, though, if he had, like, a long hose, and then he turns it on and just blasts him all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, wouldn't really work. But the, the personal drone technology, the, there's, they just did a report in China. They did a test of one with a human in it. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I think this problem's already solved. Thank you, Zeprooter, or whatever your name is. Zapata. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, looks cool, sounds cool. Maybe it comes in the future. <laughs> Who knows? I doubt it. If they do release this to the public, it's just going to be a bunch of fucking YouTubers and Instagrammers flying around on them. Yeah. 
But uh, that'll be cool because like there's a there's still a really good chance they'll like fuck up and like paralyze themselves. Yeah. So you yeah. know this is this is some good like uh, it's really natural easy selection stuff. Light people's here. houses on fire when you come down for a landing. Well, it doesn't. I don't think that's really possible. The Jets. It, it's it's uh, a. It's not like shooting fire out of it. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. They're Seems just, like he's it, thought of everything. They're just like miniature versions of uh, the engines on like airplanes, but they're like four inches wide. Okay. They do. It is, this thing is full of jet fuel, though. If you hit the ground hard enough, you will explode. Yeah. And steel beams will melt. Mm-hmm. Anyway, speaking of futuristic science fiction that eventually came true. This week marks the 50-year anniversary of the Apollo 11 launch that put the first human beings on the moon. And those human beings were American. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Even now, it's it's difficult to comprehend how something like this is even possible, but it's especially crazy given how limited the technology was then compared to now. Yeah. I mean, the phone in your pocket is several orders of magnitude more powerful than all of the computers that guided Apollo 11 to the moon and back. It's crazy. Yeah, so... They did the math. Yeah. What, what's crazy thing about this is this happened in 1969, right? So, yeah. And they, they started it all in... Uh, was in 1957. Yeah. So imagine, imagine, if you will, the year 2007 and, and to now... Yeah. And we've gone from absolutely fucking nothing to landing on the fucking moon. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. But yeah, over the course of just a decade, basically, the U.S. and Soviet Union went from launching simple satellites into space using just brute force just to be like, hey, look at that. Yeah. I put it there. Uh, to sending humans and animals into orbit, to sending humans into the moon's orbit, until finally, on July 16th, 1969, nice, nice NASA launched Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins on the first manned moon landing mission ever. The news coverage of Apollo 11 was watched around the world, and this week CBS News uploaded a four-and-a-half-hour video of their 1969 launch coverage over on their YouTube channel. It's a super fascinating fit look 50 years back at one of the biggest achievements in human history. For one thing, you get a sense of the sort of real-time anticipation that people felt while watching this all and waiting for it to take place. But also you get a bunch of weird old 1969 ads. Yeah, they're very strange. Yeah, as well as uh, other little news segments that aired during the broadcast, like uh, weather, sports recaps, Vietnam War updates, and a few human interest stories, like one about a mailman. Yeah, they were... Uh, they mailman! Were, they were worried about it being boring, because they're just like, we're just watching this thing yeah. sitting there. Yeah. Like, we got to fill this time. Yeah. Um, there was also a recent story, if it has nothing to do with this, we'd have to dig back through because I had it for a news dump one week, but I ran out of time. But uh, some woman just recorded like a decade of uh, her local station onto like 100,000 VHS tapes. Oh, yeah. shit. So it's, there, the project now is digitizing all of that. Yeah, that stuff's like fascinating. There's, I mean, obviously there's a ton of long videos on YouTube of just like TV ads, Denver, Colorado, Fox Station, 1992. Yeah. There's just people who, for whatever reason, were obsessively keeping track of this stuff. And you can put it on, it's like, especially this, the stuff that was in my lifetime, it, like, triggers this crazy, like, oh, yeah. reflex in my brain. I'm like, oh, my God, yeah. I'm five years old again. Nostalgia. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole thing, it's very cool in how uh, uh, it lets you experience an event as not just something that happened in the past, but in the exact way that most Americans experienced it when it happened. And hopefully later this week for the anniversary of the moon landing, they'll upload their original coverage of that as well. Uh, there's also a fantastic three-part series that was just uh, put up on PBS. Oh. And it's it's incredible. Each part is like two hours long, and it starts from like the beginning, Gemini and all yeah, that yeah. stuff, and, and uh, Yuri Gregarian, and it, and it ends with what we're working towards in the future. But it's an incredible three-part series. I'll have to check that out. PBS yeah. does... Uh, fantastic work. Fantastic work. American yeah. Experience is a wonderful, wonderful show. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, I mean, obviously there's... I haven't watched Apollo 11, the documentary yet. Oh, it's, oh, it's awesome. Yeah. There's, there's uh, not a lot of talking in it at all. I think there's like, nah. there's well, there's I think there's zero nar- narration. The only talking you're hearing, you're hearing is from uh, the people talking to the astronauts. Yeah. Back and forth. There was a similar doc that came out in like the late 80s called For All Mankind, I mm-hmm. think, that was like, it was also, because I didn't realize this, but Armstrong and Aldrin were on the moon for like 21 hours. Yeah. Like they were just like walking around just filming shit. They, they got sent up there with like, some of the nicest cameras in existence. And they're just like, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot going on up there, but just, like, drive around and film shit. So they didn't drive around on the first one. Well, they didn't bring the car up on the first one. Well, uh, the For All Mankind doc features car footage yeah. from one of the landings. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it was, uh, it's crazy stuff. 
Great, great reenactment if you're interested. It's a show called Moonshot that came out about a decade ago. Yeah. Really good stuff. Yeah. And the lead up, uh, uh, the movie, uh, the right stuff. Very good. Watch all of this. It's yeah. actually fascinating. Space is fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, time for some sponsorship mm -hmm. stuff. This yeah. episode, sponsored by Capterra. Uh, we've all read some surprising online reviews, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're trying to get a sweet deal on something you've been saving for or trying to find the best happy hour in town, it is generally a good idea to read the reviews first. So why should finding the right software for your business be any different? Read thousands of real software reviews and find the right software for your business at capterra.com slash newsday. Capterra is the leading free online resource to help you find the best software solution for your business. With over 850,000 reviews of products from real software users, discover everything you need to make an informed decision. Search more than 700 specific categories of software, everything from project management to email marketing to yoga studio management software. No matter what kind of software your business needs, Capterra makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. Join the millions of people who use Capterra each month to find the right tools for their business. Visit capterra.com slash newsday for free today to find the tools to make an informed software decision for your business. That's C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash newsday. Link below. Capterra. Software selection simplified. This episode is also sponsored by Drop, formerly known as Mass Drop. They recently sent us the PC37X gaming headset, and it's a collaboration between them and Sennheiser. We've been uh, working with it for the past couple of days, uh, editing with it, playing games with it, and uh, it's a damn good headset. They're good cans. Uh, they're great for gaming, and in our case, doing lots of internet searching, browsing, listening, and editing very long YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. uh, it's getting hot these days, so the fact that these headphones have an open back design that lets in some air and stops things from getting sweaty... That's a bonus. Yeah, my ears are, I don't know if this came with age, but the insides of my ears are sweaty. Yeah, every time. It's weird. Like during the day, I go, oh, my ears are burning. No, they're actually burning. Yeah. Well, not anymore. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, it's a very comfy headset. And most importantly, the audio quality is great. Sennheiser's been making high-quality audio products for over 80 years, and it shows when you're in-game, you can hear exactly where those footsteps are coming from. And the microphone quality is shockingly good. Uh, here's a quick sample that I recorded just directly through the mic at home. Oh, hey, it's me at home, testing out that microphone for your ears. Wow, that sounds better than here. Wow. So if you're in the market for a new set of gaming cans, we highly recommend the PC37X by Drop and Sennheiser. It's got over 10,000 purchases on Drop and loads of five-star reviews like the ones you're seeing on screen right now. Head over to dro.ps slash... Just go to the link down the, in the go description. Go to the link in the description. It's a uh, long link. Yeah, it's a long link. Um, you'll get $20 off your purchase of the PC37X by going there. Again, if you're in the market for a great set of headphones or the Mass Drop X Sennheiser PC37X by clicking the link down in the description. In modern tech news, the U.S. House Judiciary Committee's antitrust panel invited representatives from Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Apple into their chamber on Tuesday to basically just yell at them for a variety of grievances, big and small, real and imagined. Uh, as is typical when Congress brings these people in for questioning, much of the discussion was cringeworthy because a lot of these people are very old. Mm -hmm. But it is nice to see that one of the few rare issues with bipartisan support in our government is the fact that these four tech companies have basically, they, they're huge, to the point where it may call for antitrust proceedings. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but they're looking into it. Yeah. Uh, one of the best quotes of the day came from Representative Sherrod Brown of Ohio, who said this to Facebook. Now, Facebook may not intend to be dangerous, but surely they don't respect the power of the technologies they're playing with. Like a toddler who has gotten his hands on a book of matches, Facebook has burned down the house over and over and called every arson a learning experience. <laughs> Well, it is if you're an arsonist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're getting really good at arson. Yeah. Wow, Facebook's getting really good at committing crimes. Mommy, can I get one of those Elon Musk blowtorches for my birthday? I think I've graduated from matches. Uh, uh, fucking what's his name's brother's really upset about the Elon Musk flamethrower. Uh, the, the, the coke guy from uh, the Medellin cartel guy. Pablo Escobar? Yeah, his brother's like suing Tesla or Elon Musk. Why? For, he thinks that he stole the fucking flamethrower idea. Anyways. Well, okay. Uh, this all, this Facebook thing, it comes on the heels of last week's House and Senate committee hearings on Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency, bad idea, <laughs> during which Congress was understandably skeptical or downright hostile about the idea of Facebook starting its own currency, especially since they plan to launch it less than a year from now. Again, this is a rare bipartisan issue. And the biggest evidence of, uh, of all of this is the fact that Donald Trump himself, in between tweeting out various insanities from the past week, 
tweeted on Friday that not only is he strongly against Libra, but cryptocurrency in general. There's a strong possibility based on the grammar and syntax that he did not, in fact, write this himself. Probably Steve Mnuchin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, regardless, the reaction from disappointed crypto lovers, some of whom also love Trump, uh, that was fun to read. Mr. President, please reconsider. You're hurting the wrong people. Yeah. <laughs> the classic quote. <laughs> All right, well, let's get through a few more quick news tidbits. Uh, if you've got an Android phone and you use Google Assistant uh, or you've got a Google Home device in your house, here's some fun news. A guy over in Belgium who was hired as a contractor by Google to review and transcribe recordings in order to train the AI behind Google Assistant just went ahead and released over a thousand of those recordings to Belgian news organization VRT. Uh, they then listened through a bunch of them and were able to use context clues from a, a few of the recordings to figure out who the voices belong to. So yeah, you probably know that everything you've ever said to Google Assistant is stored online and you can delete it. You should look into that. You could also yeah, <laughs> go find it. It's shocking to hear yeah. how much of your voice Going is back on your phone. years. Yes. Uh, but now you know that there's a slight chance that a human being is listening to some of those recordings. And you'd actually be forgiven for not knowing that because unlike a lot of other shady aspects of tech, Google doesn't actually tell you in the TOS that your voice recordings might be listened to by humans. Well, oopsie. oopsie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, according to uh, three of these transcribers who spoke to VRT, uh, they sometimes hear stuff like account numbers and passwords, which they're told to mark as sensitive, but, you know, no one's keeping track. Yeah. Uh, they also hear medical questions. Pretty personal. And uh, even sometimes hear people who are clearly in distress. Yikes. They say there are no guidelines for what to do in those cases. Awkward. Uh, so, yeah, that's just something to... I don't know, keep in mind next time you use that little surveillance device in your pocket. Yeah. They hear, like, couples getting in fights, babies crying, yeah. like, all kinds of fucking weird shit. Yeah. Well, all, all, typical shit that should be happening in the privacy of your own home. Not not babies crying from being strangled or something. But yeah. Babies cry. Yeah. And People it, get it in also fights. Like, it, not fist fights, vocal fights. It airs on the side of, uh, it's pretty generous with picking up its, like, command words. Yeah. So, if you can do this, you can go look through your bank of recordings like a lot of them it's you didn't like even try to yeah it's it, like yeah. when you didn't even turn it on like it was just in your pocket and it was like wait did you say something so it's it's fucking weird he might have said something i should probably turn on the yeah recording. i should probably turn on the recording and then send us over to the guy that uh you know teaches the ai how to do it yeah uh, anyways in gaming news if you're a pc gamer and you use steam they've released a pretty useful new experiment tool called uh recommender that uses machine learning to recommend games to you based on your gaming habits there's an adjustable slider to filter recommendations based on whether you're looking for something that's popular or niche, and another slider for limiting results based on how recent of a game you're looking for. You can also filter by Steam's existing tags. Uh, if, you're, if your Steam recommendations have gotten stale or you're just completely overwhelmed by the Steam store's offerings, it's a great tool for finding potential purchases that you might not have known about otherwise. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with it because like, lately the standard Steam store has been recommending me shit I'm absolutely not interested yeah. in. And I, as soon as I logged into this and started like messing with it, it showed me games I've literally never heard of that I clicked on. And I was like, yeah, I, this is like... Very much my shit. Mine's nothing but hentai puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> if you solve this, you get to see those anime titties. Mm -hmm. Anyways, by the time this video goes up, uh, Elon Musk will have already had his big Neuralink press conference where he may or may not have, uh, you know, unveiled a project that allows you to communicate telepathically or some shit. Cool. We don't know. Uh, he bizarrely scheduled it for 8 p.m. Pacific time on a Tuesday night. Odd. The man never sleeps. Yeah. Sorry, everyone who doesn't live on the Pacific coast of the United he States. He definitely put this in Grimes' <laughs> brain after reading her fitness regimen. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, that's probably why she pulled out part of her eye. She got it replaced by yeah. a better eye. There you go. But yeah, if he unveiled anything cool and worth talking about, we'll probably talk about it in our next video. Until then, if you're a member here on YouTube or a Patreon supporter, we released a new members-only podcast on Monday that you should go and check out. Uh, if you are neither a member nor a patron and want to hear that podcast and the rest of the podcast that we've done recently, uh, supporting us at the $5 level will get you all of that. Mm -hmm. And also uh, be sure to check out our two most recent videos about the bold plan to storm Area 51 and free the aliens. Because, you know, if we all do it, they can't shoot us all. Yep. So good luck out there. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.